Good evening. I'd like to call the Lake Forest City Council meeting of September the 4th, 2012 to order. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Herzog? Councilmember Rudolph? Councilmember Rudolph? Councilmember Tedemer? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Voigts? Here. Mayor McCullough? Present. And uh, would you please note that Councilmember Herzog it has an excuse absent. It's his 35th wedding anniversary. And I'm glad that he's celebrating it. <laughs> Oh, can you imagine as a wife how angry you'd be if he was here? <laughs> this, that's a good thing. Good evening, folks. We're going to move through our green agenda. Uh, they're seeing that there was no closed session, so City Attorney, you have nothing to report. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Councilmember Rudolph to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand as we pledge to one nation under God. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Seeing that we have no presentations, we're going to move right down to public comments. At this time, the members of the public is allowed to come up, and if you have put in a request to speak form and hand it to Deborah, raise your hand. And if you did not, it's not too late. You can still uh, put in a form right quick. And I want you to remember that when you come up to the mic, there will be a little box. And the f as soon as you give your name and your city, do not give us your address. Uh, the green light will come on. And when the yellow light comes on, you've got one minute to wrap it up. When the red light comes on, it's time to say bye. <laughs> okay? And do we have any requests to speak? Our first speaker is Kevin Donahue, followed by Robert Clark. And as they're coming up, I'd like to give you a little note. Um, the state of California do not allow us to make a comment on when you come up for public uh, comments. These are things that are not on the agenda and they don't allow us to make a comment. That does not mean that we're not interested and our, our staff is taking notes and if you put in a request they will get back to you or you can call and they'll we'll connect you up to the person that you need. Thank you. Come on up. My name is Kevin Donahue. I live in Lake Forest. I'm here tonight to talk about the proposed El Toro Bleacher Project. Uh, my subject will cover traffic, parking, pedestrian safety, and liability. Uh, the proposed stadium will have 4,200 seat stadium. If you divide that number by three, that will give you the approximate need of parking, which is around 1,400. And currently, as El Toro High School is configured, that will leave them about 700 spaces short. That begs the question, where will they park? Obviously, they'll probably park in the neighborhoods, the neighborhoods of Serrano Ridge, Likely, and the Woods. Uh, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is, as a person who lives in Serrano Ridge, is you have young teenage drivers in the proximity of the high school, likely have several more from out of our area on a game night. And if you look at Serrano, as it's adjacent to the high school, the two crosswalks are at El Toro Road and Ridge Route. If you look at where the stadium is going to be, the stadium will be right in the middle. There is no safe crosswalk for these people to cross. If you look at what will people do, they will jaywalk. They will, people will park bumper to bumper along Serrano and there will be literally hundreds of people each game night darting between the cars to get to this stadium. Well, we know that happened on the 4th of July recently, a couple years ago. Someone was killed doing the same thing. Is it reasonable to assume that an accident like that could happen again? Perhaps it is. 
is it reasonable to assume that a lawsuit would ensue? This is California. During the discovery phase of the lawsuit, would the plaintiff's attorney find out about the prior fatality and that the city knew about the condition and allowed it to continue? How much would this cost the city in money? It's unfair that we should have the district allow to make a decision that could possibly cause liability to the city. I recommend that we ask the district to construct a parking structure on site at El Toro to provide for the parking or and or have a pedestrian crossing and a traffic signal so people could safely cross to get to these games. My conclusion is that the citizens of Lake Forest should not be exposed to legal liability and possible damages because of the decisions of the school board. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Clark, followed by Carrie Garcia. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Lake Forest City Council. My name is Robert Clark, and I'm a Lake Forest resident. I have been since 1986. I have two children that have matriculated through the San, uh, Saddleback Valley Unified School District. Uh, my son just finished doing his, his elementary school teaching at, at La Madeira across the street from the high school. Uh, I used to be a former Huntington Beach Union High School District employee myself. <coughs> I'm here tonight to respectfully ask this commission to request that the district permanently abandon their plans to build this stadium or bleacher improvement as they call it. In 1933, the Long Beach earthquake and the state of California passed, because of the Long Beach earthquake, the state of California passed legislation requiring that public school construction be the responsibility of the state architect. This was a result of hodgepodge mess of local municipal and, and ju city jurisdictions and a general lack of code enforcement. The state of California now stipulates that school districts comply with virtually all of the city and, and county requirements in a local area. If this were a private project, it is so fraught with problems, it would undoubtedly be rejected by this council just for lack of being able to meet codes and regulations. Parking issues alone would halt the project, not to mention noise, traffic, and other environmental concerns. The state's education code is full of thousands of pages, but there's a common theme that runs through that and the CCNRs, and that is school districts, municipalities, and all public trusts should seek to develop and preserve the respect of the community and develop solutions that are clearly not negatively and severely impacting the surrounding neighborhoods or that don't divide the communities. We're now in a review process for the EIR. I would encourage this council to do their own due diligence and do an extensive and independent review. The DEIR has been poorly and hastily assembled. It's full of, it's incorrectly collected data, draws erroneous conclusions, is based on inaccurate data, contains misleading language, and does not explore all the alternatives in general is not complete. Ms. Rudolph, you've spent over 20 years. I'm sure you know how the district operates. Mr. Boyd is a champion of the Constitution, an advocate of the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. Herzog is, believes in protecting and enhancing the quality of life in Lake Forest. And Mr. Tedemer's experienced Water Resources Manager and Planning Commissioner. Mayor McCullough serves on more boards than, than a lumber yard. And she's a co-pastor for her church. You guys are intelligent and reasonable people out there. I beg you to challenge this DEIR. Do your own independent research and dig into this thing. Don't take, and it's not my jurisdiction, attitude. Do the due diligence because ultimately Everybody's going to point the finger back at you guys and say, you approved it. You recommended it. And like you said, when somebody gets hurt, they're going to come after the city. It will become your jurisdiction. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie Garcia, followed by Cheryl Bartetsko. Good evening. I'm 
Carrie Garcia, and I'm a resident and a property owner in Lake Forest, and I'm here to speak about the El Toro High School Stadium issue. Um, at the moment, where we have the stadium planned is along a two-lane street called Serrano. Um, just on a regular school day, the traffic in and out of that parking lot, because now it's just one way in, one way out, um, is very hectic and very difficult for us as residents of Serrano Ridge to exit our track. Um, I don't understand how the district feels that in any way, shape, or form their traffic plans in this DEIR are going to solve this problem or make it better. Um, there is one section in the traffic study that says it all should be no also should be noted that traffic conditions are similar to those that are proposed for the project that currently exists during the morning peak hours of approximately 2,000 students and 175 teachers arriving at school. This does not take into effect the visiting team's amount of people and visitors and players and teachers and fans coming to these games. This is just El Toro's population of our high school. So I would like to also point out what I think is going to be budgetary strains on the City Council's services to the community, and that's in relation to the Sheriff's services. I think that we're going to be having a lot of traffic that's going to need to be controlled um, in and out of the parking lot. I believe that there will be additional accidents, if not, hopefully, no fatalities, but I'm sure there will be collisions of cars, collisions with pedestrians, again, taxing the resources of our sheriffs. Um, we pay for that, we as residents, everybody of residents of, of Lake Forest. That's my concern, that we cannot, in this economic time, be able to absorb the additional costs on our public safety concerns if a stadium is put in in the location it's currently planned. I too would have a different view if they have a parking structure plan, but they do not. I believe that their plans right now are a little um, beyond reasonable and I think they hope for the best, that they're not an accurate picture of what will actually happen in the way of traffic around a proposed stadium. So those are my comments. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Next. Cheryl Bartetsko, followed by Matthew McKinney. My name is Cheryl Bartetsko. I am a resident and a homeowner here in Lake Forest. I am accompanied by the uh, young woman I wanted to introduce the council to, Dr. Martha Parham, who is the event chair for the upcoming Lake Forest Relay for Life. We're very excited about the fact that it's a seventh anniversary Relay for Life. Um, Mr. Tedimer and his original crew group started a very successful event in Orange County. There's a basic reason that all of us, whether we be a survivor, whether we have a parent affected by cancer, the scary figure I'd like to share with all of you, though, in Orange County, every single day of the 365 days a year, 33 people hear the words, you have cancer. And in Orange County, every single day, 365 days a year, 11 people lose their battle with cancer. This is why the Lake Forest community continues to have such a successful event. A couple of years ago we invited the council to participate with something for the silent auction. We're inviting you once again to decorate an ornament for the silent auction and I promise we'll keep them out of the wind that time so that we won't have a couple break. I'll leave these with Deborah and we'd just like to have them back about a, three or four days prior to the event. But we also would like to issue a challenge to you. As Cheryl said, my name is Martha Parham. I'm a resident and a homeowner in the city of Lake Forest, and I'm happy to be a part of my home relay. I've been relaying in Brea for a number of years, so I'm happy to bring it home to Lake Forest. We would like to invite all of you and indeed challenge you to please attend our event and please raise awareness and hopefully with your support and the support of the community 
cancer will be in the history books. Excuse me. You didn't give us a date, time, or place. Sorry, Madam Mayor. October 6th and 7th, El Toro High School, 10 a.m. Saturday morning to 10 a.m. Sunday morning, 24 hours because cancer never sleeps. And it will be back on the soccer field rather than on the track. It makes a much better community place to have that project. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Matthew McKinney, followed by Henry Deming. Hello, my name is Matthew McKinney. I'm a resident and homeowner of Lake Forest. I'm also, I've also come here to speak to you regarding the El Toro High School project. And I wanted to ask that you take a position to advocate for the people that are here that are advocating for their neighbors, that um, there are a lot of problems with this project. As has already been described, there are a number of parking issues in terms of having insufficient space. There are um, traffic issues that are being perceived uh, as possible problems. As we know, there's already problems along Serrano there. There's been, unfortunately, multiple fatalities along Serrano and Ridge Route that have happened in, in the not too distant past. And as a homeowner, we don't really have a great, or excuse me, as a resident, we don't have a tremendous amount of recourse to take action with this. But as the City Council, you guys are in a position where you're able to take steps on our behalf. And I would ask that uh, you, uh, I'm echoing people who are before me, but actually you take a careful consideration of the draft EIR that, um, as I read it, and you know, I'm a, I'm a layman, as I read it, there are some things in there that are mitigations that are kind of pathetic. Um, some of the mitigations are planting 24 inch trees along Serrano to prevent sound and light. And you know, if you've seen a 24-inch box tree, it's it's not very impressive, at least not the first 10 years or so. Um, also, you know, the the noise mitigation that they're talking about is putting up a, a I forget the exact height, but something less than 10 feet, 10 foot sound wall, and that's not going to be sufficient for the homeowners in the area. They're going to have any sound is going to be coming from a, a PA system that's going to be mounted high for people to hear, and it's just it's not going to be sufficient. Um, additionally. Besides the number of uh, parking spaces being woefully insufficient, um, I'm sorry. The um, the noise issues beyond just right at the stadium are are, um, are significant already. There's already a lot there, and people knew that when they were moving in. You know, I've I've lived in Lake Forest for a little over two years, and I knew what I was getting into when I moved there. I knew that the high school was there, but I also knew that there was no stadium in the area. And looking at the spot, I thought, oh, they're never going to build anything here. So, I've kind of I'm a little concerned that that would pop up. You know, sometime this summer they had a swimming event at El Toro, and I looking at the space that the swimming facilities holds, I would guess that it holds less than a thousand people. However, because of all of the associated activities with it, not only was the entire main parking lot of El Toro full, it was spilling out into Serrano, and, and not just a few cars, but there were probably between 60 and 100 cars on Serrano, and that was for a very small event. So my concern is that I'm not going to be able to turn out of my own community for the 30 minutes before and after football games. My concern is that the cars that are going to be driven by people who are in a hurry trying to get in and out, and, and there's going to be a lot of problems associated with that. So, uh, just trying to be brief, I once again ask that you would take your time to consider this and please advocate for us because uh, you, you are our voice with the school district and you have standing to take action with them. So I ask that you would please do that. Thanks. Thank you. Henry Deming, followed by Sandy Ewick. Hi, my name is Henry Deming and I live, uh, I'm a Lake Forest resident. I want to address the council on the proposed El Toro Stadium as well. Uh, I have lived in Syria for 30 years, and I can, there was a lot of reasons why a stadium was never built. The former principal, Don Walker, whose name is on the gym, plastered around the wall, uh, stated he would never do it. A bunch of boosters came to a principal later on and said, we'll build a, we'll build a stadium. He said no. Measure B was passed, and the wording of that measure was, Measure B, the stadium shall be off-site. A lot of people looked at this, and now... Uh, it looks like they're trying to shove it down our throats. That's the opinion that most of us are getting that live in the immediate area. I do live in that immediate area. 
the Lake Forest CEQA guidelines uh, stated for projects that are going to be built within the city says that the main condition going forward with that project is it going to impact the community? Is there going to be division in the community? I can tell you there already is. The division is there uh, because of this project. Um, I, can. I would hope that U SVUSD had the same thought process, but after reading part of that DEIR report, not a lot of it, and I'm not a, I'm not a layman, uh, I don't think they had much. As people have previously have stated, uh, this thing is not really mitigating it. To me, mitigating it would be putting a stadium for 1,000 people in 40-foot lights. That would be mitigation, not almost 5,000 in 80-foot lights. I have a few questions for the city. Was the city ever contacted about an off-site stadium by SVUSD officials after measure was P B was passed a few years ago? I don't know if anyone's ever asked that question. Has the city reviewed? I know what the city uh, the DI, DEI report, uh, has, DEIR report has just come out. Have they reviewed it? And have they or will they make any changes to the document concerning city concern? And these are your concerns, like we've uh, stated in the in the past. I'm going over some of the issues. Traffic, police, emergency vehicles, noise. I think those are all city concerns. And again, is the city prepared for lawsuits? And it's been mentioned before. I know of two deaths. I've lived in this area for a long time on Serrano. I can't think of another side street. Uh, well, if you take El Toro or Lake Forest Drive, well, there's been two fatalities in the last five years. I can't think of another one. Just a two-lane road in Lake Forest. I really can't think of one. But we've had two deaths on that street. Can you imagine how this is, problem is going to be exacerbated at night when people cannot see? They're going to be darting from cars. Even if they put in a crosswalk like the other people, had, uh, other speaker had mentioned, I don't think the people are going to use it. They're just going to dart across and go to the game. And a two-lane street, it's going, to be, it's going to be a battle. In the DER report about noise, the report states that if all the homeowners' windows are closed during stadium events, noise will not be a factor. That's one of their mitigations. All the windows in your home are going to be closed. It won't be a problem. This requirement makes all the homeowners in the impact area feel like prisoners in their own home. I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up. Okay. Light is showing. Approximately a week ago, a practice football game was held at El Toro High with probably 100, and 100 or so staff, football teams and, and uh, players, and probably 150 to 200 fans that are in the bleachers, parents and everything. Uh, I could not carry in a conversation with my wife or listen to the TV while this game was going on. Can you imagine the noise with just 10 times the number of people? Never mind even more. It's going to be more than that. I live about 60 to 70 feet from the field. That concludes my statements. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy Yurick. Mayor McAuliffe, uh, council members, thank you for giving me the opportunity to voice um, our concerns uh, in the neighborhood. To speak um, on the El Toro Stadium expansion. My name is Sandy Uick and my husband and I have lived in Lake Forest here for 30 years. Um, I continue during these years to volunteer in the schools and the community. Before we became a city as president and board member of Lake Forest II, uh, community uh, Lake Forest Homeowners Association, I worked with the county on issues that affected our Lake Forest community. It was Marsha Rudolph, Helen Wilson, myself and others who began the talks of becoming a city. I've been around to see changes, improvements that have been made to make us proud to live here in Lake Forest. Thank you to all of you who serve and make Lake Forest one of the safest cities. We see traffic and safety to be a concern of this city. Measure B, an off-site stadium, was passed overwhelmingly by residents of Saddleback Valley. If the district had worked with the city and others to make this happen, we wouldn't be having this conversation. 
it would be a win-win for all. Now I'm back again talking about safety of our residents. The children in Saddleback Valley that may attend football games, events, activities at El Toro High School. Serrano is a two-lane road, which you've heard, with parking on both sides, an already impacted area at times where it is unsafe to exit our development. I believe life is more important than having a stadium at this location. An accident just waiting to happen. You've made you've been made aware of this situation, so I pray I'm wrong that a life won't be lost. You have the opportunity to address this uh, in comments of the DEIR. The DEIR is now available, and we ask that you, the Consul, do an independent study. Please address everyone's concern, traffic, and especially safety. Thank you. We've had no further requests. Is there anyone that would like to respond that has something new that has not been said, that did not have the opportunity to fill out a slip? Seeing none, bring it back to the council. Move along to the consent calendar for the warrant registry. I don't see any request to pull. The warrant. Oh, hold on. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, on the uh, warrant register, uh, there is an item to Irvine Ranch Water District. I'd like to disclose that I'm an employee of Irvine Ranch Water District. I'm not affiliated with the rate making or billing aspects of the agency and have no financial interest in the matter. And having made that disclosure, I will vote on that item. Thank you. Now you can make your motion. I'd like to move the warrant registry. Can I? Can I get a, entertain a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any opposition? Motion carries. On the consent calendar, miscellaneous agenda items, uh, items two through six. Do you have someone has pulled something? Yes, item six. Item six. Is there anyone else desire to pull one of the items on the consent calendar? Okay. Move the balance. Second. It's been moved and second. And is there any opposition? Motion carries. Item six. Agenda item six, award of contract for park restroom janitorial services, submitted by the Director of Public Works, City Engineer, and removed from the consent calendar by a member of the public. Kathy Zeckmeister. Is it on? Good evening. I'm Kathy Zeckmeister, Mayor McCullough, and the Council. Just wanted to maybe understand this a little more. I looked at the bids for the um, janitorial services, and they had quite a range of pricing on it. And I didn't know if that was the council's um, desire or staff's desire just to go with the lowest bid. But the bids start at twenty-seven thousand and go all the way up to two hundred and sixty-one thousand, which is a large range. Kind of a gap there. Um, and also that the current it appears that the current uh, company Team One Management is a Lake Forest vendor versus the um, vendor that has been suggested to go with is a Los Angeles based contractor. Again, I don't know all the particulars of how the bids go out. I understand that the bids are good for a three year process and then each year they review them. But I thought there was just kind of a vast gap here. Uh, I don't know if staff works with the vendors to work with the vendor rather than just to go out to bid every time each time rather than working with them to maybe cause them to have the prices stabilized 
especially during this time. So I just wanted to see if the board wanted to consider tabling this to reevaluate the bids because the bids went from 27,000 all the way up to 261,000. I thought that was kind of a wide range. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Are you asking, did we want to table it? I didn't get a request to table. Oh. Uh, one of the comments that you made was that you didn't understand how the bid process works for this item, agenda item six. Uh, is, uh, city manager, do you have someone or would you like to explain to her briefly? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I'll actually defer to uh, Tom Wheeler, our Director of Public Works, City Engineer. This is his item, uh, and it does follow a uh, very exacting process. Uh, as council policy requires, these bids, uh, these services are, are contracted out uh, annually because of the nature of the service with two one-year options. Uh, very consistent where uh, we simply don't uh, continue with the same vendor each and every time, but there's a, a limit to the amount in which then the council desires that it go back out to bid. So with that being said, I'll let Mr. Wheeler talk about the specifics to this item briefly. I'd like for it to be very brief. If you need more, then you're going to need to get back to her. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Thank you, members of council. Uh, no, this is a, a low bid process where we go out to, to uh, through the mayor. This is a low bid process where we go out to bid every usually three to five years, uh, depending on what the term of the original contract was. So we take the low bidder. So we analyze it. What you'll see in the spreads were actually a series of mathematical errors made by the what we believe are mathematical errors. It's pretty obvious when, when you looked at the, the bids in detail. Um, yeah. And uh, because of that, we think they just put the bids in the wrong place for several of them. We go through every time we bid a project and correct for the mathematical errors to make sure. We believe the, uh, the low four or five bidders were all in a really good tight range. Um, it was very close within 4% of what we estimated the cost would be. So that's why we went with the lowest bidder. We can't justify um, spending more money uh, for the same type of work. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Is there anyone else? Request to speak for? We've had no further requests. Is there anyone that did not get in a uh, request to speak for on agenda item seven that would like to speak? Seeing none, bring it back to the council. Uh, question of staff: uh, What is our time frame for this contract? The current contract actually expires September 14th, so staff is recommending that you move forward with this bid now so we have coverage in the near future. Thank you. Seeing that, I entertain a motion. I'll move staff recommendation. Second. I'll it's been moved and second. Any opposition? Motion carries. Agenda item eight. Seeing that there is Ag agenda item seven, legislative and regulatory matters submitted by the city manager. I'm sorry, but Peter not here. I, I jumped right over it. Legislative. <laughs> Madam members of the council, the staffs provided. Uh, the City Council with a report related to the bills that you found of interest and took positions on this year as they made their way through the legislative process. Uh, we have nothing further to add than what we've already included in the report, but we'd be glad to respond to any questions that the Council may have. Were there any requests to speak for? We've had no requests. Is there anyone that would like to address Agenda Item 7 that did not have the opportunity to put in a request to speak for? Seeing none, bring it back to the council. Anybody have any pending legislation that you'd like to make a comment on? I've got a first. Do I have a second? And a third. Oh, you're on the ball tonight. <laughs> uh, is there any opposition? Motion carries. Agenda item eight. Agenda item eight, the request for appointment, League of California Cities, Association of California Cities, Orange County, and or the Orange County City Selection Committee, submitted by City Clerk. 
seeing none, is there any request to respond? Even though we don't have any, but you may want to hope that there is some or anything. Seeing none. Motion? No motion. We don't need one because we don't have any. Just, just make sure you're on your toes. City Manager's report? I have nothing further this evening, Madam Mayor. City Council, starting with uh, Council, Member Hurst, uh, Council Member Rudolph. Okay. Um, I attended the, um, the League Orange County Division uh, dinner. The speaker was excellent, but got maybe more than we wanted to know about budgets. Uh, state, the state budgets and it was interesting because when he left he said uh, he would be back <laughs> so I don't know you know what that portends but we all know that we've got a mess that has to be cleaned up so we'll see um, I also uh, attended the site tour of the Restoration Advisory Board yes we are still working on the cleanup of the mess that the Marine Corps uh, left us at El Toro Marine Corps Air Station. Um, a lot has been done. Something called FOST 7 has been approved. FOST is a feasibility for transfer, which means the Navy walks away from particular sites. Um, that is the seventh transfer of properties and they're getting smaller and smaller inside. A um, couple of them are larger than, than we would expect, but uh, that is what happened. But the other interesting thing is we've had a couple of, um, a couple of studies that have come out uh, very concerned about the issue of perchlorate. Perchlorate is a, um, a contaminant that results from uh, rocket fuel. And it also moves extremely rapidly in the subsurface. Um, over the years, um, basically, we've been saying, what about perchlorate and Site 1? Site 1 is the, the old um, uh, ordinance disposal area, um, which the FBI think, said uh, they can continue using because even though it's a 10-year you know, gap between the um, Marine Corps leaving and the FBI rehabilitating it. Um, they're, they're using it now, and I know people in Foothill Ranch um, are hearing what some of our ris original residents used to hear when the Navy and the Marine Corps uh, were disposing of ordinance at that site. Um, the perchlorate is a contaminant. It's in the subsurface. The numbers for it um, are much larger than we've seen in a long time and far um, far larger than the uh, allowable under, um, under state law. So we're going to have to keep an eye on it. Um, the uh, State Department of Toxic Substance Control has uh, written a letter and they are concerned about it so we're I'm just going to keep on keeping on we have another meeting coming up in October so we'll see what happens when we get to that one um, finally um, Orange County Safe from the Start um, is really up and going uh, this is an organization that um, has as its major purpose violence prevention especially with uh, children from birth to you know as they get older but basically small children um, there is now a parent workbook that has been um, put together by Safe from the Start Safe from the Start uh, uh, goes out to the community either through uh, the schools um, through churches, organizations, anyone who would like to have their people understand the impacts of violence upon young children particularly can call Faith from the Start and uh, get a presentation. Um, one of the big things that's going to be happening on March 7th is uh, 
Dr. Bruce Perry is going to be coming back to Orange County. He hasn't been back here for over 10 years. Um, he is the uh, authority on the effects of violence on young children in particular um, and has written it. Now I think he has a third book out. Um, he is quite um, he is quite a speaker and as passionate when it comes to the uh, to the subject of violence in children. Um, what has happened now is, say from the start, we'll go out to the community. They do they have um, materials and a program that um, is in English to English speakers, in Spanish to Spanish speakers, in Farsi to speakers of Farsi, uh, in Vietnamese to the Vietnamese community. In Korean, that's the, ne the, the most recent one. It's not a matter of taking an English version of something and just overpinning uh, a translation. The material is specifically geared to speak to that community and their, um, and their needs and their philosophies of things. Uh, it is really excellent, and we now have a parent workbook um, that goes with those who have a chance to see the presentation. I know I'm over time, but you Orange sure County Safe from the Start is really a very special program, and if we want to get a handle on the violence in our communities, it is important that we start with the youngest children. Thank you. You owe me some time. See, she saw me busy signing papers. That's why she kept going. <laughs> Council Member Tetterman. So she just used some of your time. That was nice of you. Mayor Pro Tim. Tim. No, nothing further, thank you. Oh my goodness, y'all must want to go home. I'm going to be as quick as I can. I'm not going to expand on your it. List. I'll <laughs> give you some of my time. Oh, I think I can get it in. Let's see. Deborah. I attended the HCD, that's uh, Orange County Housing uh, Commission, and I, um, it was time for us to elect in all the years I've been involved in, and I never took chair, but I will be the chair of the Orange County Housing Authority uh, next year. Uh, I attended the Orange County League of Cities, and um, that's another one I never take a position on, but I will be on the, uh, what is it, City at Large for Orange uh, Gordon Grove uh, has not paid their dues, so the next largest city is Lake Forest, so we needed to have a, a representative, so I uh, was voted in that position also. Uh, the Oversight Board, as you know, that we're kind of regrouping. I gave a, a quick report last time. That's the 2020 Oversight Board. Is uh, That's where we're trying to stump out uh, homelessness in uh, Orange County by the year of 2020 and we've got a uh, new director that's coming aboard and we're going to have a retreat to try and do some brainstorming and get some things, see what, where we've came from and wh how much further we need to go. I also attended um, OTC, it really was at OTCA, uh, Orange County Transit Authority for Southern California Associate of Government, the RENA, the RENA uh, which is the Regional Housing Needs Assessment. It is uh, not totally wrapped up. We still have a few appeals hanging out. We have a lo few loose ends we need to tighten up. So I attended that so we could try and get that uh, tidied up. Uh, there was a ri ribbon cutting uh, and I don't remember if that side of the street is Patola or Foothill. I think it's Patola. Uh, at Urban Kitchen and Grill and uh, I uh, they, if for any of you that like steaks, and my husband's eyes got about this big, the steaks were about that big, and and about that round. So if you like beef or, or pork, I think they had some pork and filet mignon. Uh, all they have really large portions, and it was very nice. It's right up here, uh, in the same lot with the what is it round table? Glen Ranch Road in Portola. Glen Ranch Road in Portola. Thank you. Uh, also. Um, there was a special needs meeting for uh, Orange County Tr uh, Transit Authority. Uh, uh, we 
don't know when we're going to have another meeting, but we're trying to solidify some things, and we got some more monies to keep the access program going, and we had a terrible waiting list, and that waiting list is whittling down now, so I'm pretty happy that the waiting list for the people that have a need to, for uh, transportation can get about. We had something that was history happened uh, here this, this last week, and as you know, the mayors usually be at the Eagle Scouts or Girl Scouts, Silver and Gold or whatever, but there was a family that had three young men that all received their Eagle Scout on the exact same night. And that is history. Three at one time, uh, three sons, and oh, I didn't bring my little slip. I think I forgot it. And not only are these three sons have all accomplished a Eagle Scout, this family have potential. Some are already, one is already in, uh, headed toward his college, but they have a potential that one wants to be an engineer and he's, he's going to be studying to be an engineer. One wants to be a judge and he's taking procedures in order to be a judge, and one wants to be a scientist. You're talking about brilliance here in Lake Forest. We have brilliance. This is our future that we're talking about. Three young men in the same family. I've never encountered that before, and that is a man that, that, that mother and father should stick their chests out and boast and brag every chance they get. And I'm boasting to everyone about it. I'm very proud of that. Uh, also, uh, the Labor Day, I'm hoping that everybody had a nice, safe one and, and got a chance to cease from labor a little bit. Um, I will be attending the uh, League of California City, the State League down in San Diego. In fact, I'll be leaving here immediately after. And in attending, this is some training and, and opportunity to vote on different things. It's going to the legislation. And I would just like to quote something that came from Abraham Lincoln. He said, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six sharpening my axe. So if we spend six hours sharpening the axe, we could definitely chop the tree down with those other two hours. Have a nice night. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.